थैंक यू सचिन एम आई ऑडिबल क्लियरली या a uh, very good morning to one and all connected with us from all across the country hi my name is akshay singh ranawat and i welcome you all on behalf of ccs national institute of agriculture marketing jaipur to the webinar series of kisan mitra on agricultural technology for marketing organized by ccs niam in collaboration with office of principal scientific advisor government of india a uh, ccs national institute of agricultural marketing is an autonomous organization established under the aegis of ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare government of india to cater various agriculture related needs aspects uh, related uh, you know in the for example training research consultancy education in the field of agricultural marketing ccs niam is also recognized globally as a center for excellence in southeast asia uh, kisan mitra or as we call it friends of farmer is an initiative by principal scientific advisor office in partnership with ccs niam the ob entire objective of this initiative was to bring technologies to farmers and reverse migrants who have moved or diverted to rural india to due to impact of covid-19 under this initiative more than more than 1000 technologies have been identified which are supported by icai and institutes like nabard ministry of rural development isro and gates foundation on the supply side of the technology for uh, there there are innovators entrepreneurs researchers in academic and research institutions talking about their technology whereas on uh, considering the demand side of this webinar series we have participants ranging typically from agri business enthusiasts government functionaries agri business companies to other agri business stakeholders who are keen in agri technologies uh, so moving towards today's webinar we will be discussing two topics with our first speaker uh, who shall be highlighting on the subject of kisan mitra its vision and the platform it's showcasing and what the platform offers and with the second speaker we shall be discussing the sustainability of milk productivity in dairy cattle through enzyme technology so uh, without further ado uh, we'll be i'll I'll, be, i'll introduce uh, to everyone in the webinar our first speaker featured in forbes magazine as a social invest investor investor engineering social chain mr nagarajan prakashan famously known as naga is a versatile uh, passionate leader with more than two decades of global experience both local as well as international Uh, with so many feathers to his cap and his diverse endeavors in startup and investment ecosystem is currently associated with Kisan Mitra as an advisor sir i welcome you on behalf of ccs niam family uh with avtar second speaker of <laughs> hello yeah thank you go ahead yeah yes um uh with our second speaker of the day uh, dr ravi chandra who has you know created the india's largest fso manufacturing plant with 10000 metric tons per year and has developed a cutting edge patent uh, edge patented enzyme engineering technology he comes with an experience in genetics from ccs haryana agricultural university and is a phd holder from uh, is currently pursuing his phd Uh, sorry it's holder from phd from international center for genetic engineering and biotechnology in molecular biology and structural biology in new delhi sir i welcome you on behalf of ccs niam family thank you so we'll be moving towards the first presentation for today uh, over to you naga sir you can take it further great thanks thanks akshay and um, thanks for everyone joining the call uh, uh this is uh, you know fantastic uh, initiative by the principal scientific advisor office uh which was started with a vision that um, if you see that there are 11 million people have gone back to their villages and uh, there are uh, mo most of them are farmers or farmers background and there is a productive rural youth who left their uh, you know villages because of the livelihood being lost and they ended up in cities and doing various activities i think uh, this phenomena I, i think this is a very very sad story at the same time that provides an opportunity as well to improve the rural livelihood because there was an aspiration in people minds about uh, towards cities i want to you know make it big but they are not coming here prepared right they, when they come with that uh, as an unskilled labor the city exploits so this is where that opportunity is there for us to start looking at what need to be done from the aspect of um, yeah 
from the aspect of uh, providing them the skills required or if they come back i think uh, you know they should live in uh, probably what i call in india not in bharat so that was an idea and that's where uh, you know we started searching for what we could equip them with uh, so that is where we saw that there are thousands of technologies developed to, to improve the farmers livelihood it was that are available between uh, indian council of agriculture research and uh, csir and iits and various agricultural universities across the country i think this was initiated just for 5 months old where we have started accumulating all this data and technologies available across under this one national digital repository called kisan mitra so there today we are on 1146 technologies available and um, so that one of the idea is about how do we bring uh, the innovators to come and talk about the technologies bring uh, enablers like startups incubators across the country uh, we brought them as well on the market side who can take this to the market that is where we are uh, partnering i think last week we had uh, in charge of kvk spoke and he uh, you know kvk is uh, 721 kisan vigyan kendras are available across the country which has access to lot of farmers but the other side there are startup they're struggling to sell it to the farmers because they don't know how to uh, reach out to the farmers they ended up giving a technologies to the intermediaries which again squeeze the farmer rather than help the farmer so we are trying to bring the three elements together in kisan mitra platform i think one element is about the bring the technologies available across institutions plus bring the incubators and startups and enablers that fpo ngo these are all enablers in one side then the market side right plus who is on the field so we have enabled now kvks and uh, the hundreds of fpo also joining and then uh, we have a small uh, fsfac right small farmer holders are there across the country and then uh, panchayat raj representatives are there all of them i know we are we have them available in the buyer side so connecting all these three and we hope to take this technologies back to the rural india where you can equip the farmers with and there are a lot of productive youth have gone back to this people and how can we enable the youth with technology right the youth is looking at agriculture as something that is dirty and get involved but how do we entice them how do we motivate them to involve in agriculture i think technology has a big role to play so what an example could be is um, you know there is a farmer uh, fpo in uh, karnataka so we had a farmer who came and spoke about the challenges and he said i need forest harvesting technologies we need a uh, you know very efficient way of applying fertilizers so we showcase that drone technologies available in the platform so today uh, you know a startup in kerala which provides drones for applying fertilizer you can do it in one acre in and so they are talking to a rural youth right who can buy this drone and this rural youth can start offering fertilizer service to the farmers in the region now the farmer is getting a, you know very good technology and a youth customer who can start utilizing this technology to help the farmer at the same time he is finding a rural livelihood which has a potential aspiration for others as well there are multiple technologies as simple as you know high uh, uh, as complex as your drone or as simple as maybe a tomato processing technology available in indian institute of horticulture research where you know 3 hours from bangalore there is madan palli which is a tomato belt every season the farmer just throw the tomatoes on the field because the price gone down it is not viable for him to just go and even sell these on you know uh, to the market so now there is a technology simple way to how can i make ketchup how can i make the sun dried tomato can i sell the pulp instead of the tomatoes so the rural youth have gone back can just adapt these technologies so that they can start you know implementing this as a value addition for 
so that farmer revenue increases. So that's the idea of this Kisan Metro platform, and we have been, uh, you know, doing this uh, every week, uh, where five technologies are presented, started by a farmer's reverse pitch. Usually, you see that people develop technologies and then start looking for market. Here, we bring a farmer who will say, "There, what do I need?" Then we bring all these people, innovators and startups, who can reach out to the farmers and provide the supply. Like the farmer in uh, Ayub Khan, he's a farmer in Bidar in Karnataka, he's getting a drone technology. Similarly, a farmer from Himachal wanted a solar drying technologies that people are getting for him. Similarly, there is a startup in Manipur and he's working with the exotic local uh, fruits and he wants a pulping machine. There is a you know uh, entity in Punjab, he's able to provide him that pulp machine. So this is this is what exactly the idea of these initiative is about bring them together. So every Saturday we have five technologies are presented, and along with a farmer talking, plus one of the dignitaries speaking. Like for example, last week we had a head of KVK who came and told, "I'm opening up seven twenty-one KVKs for all your startups to come and leverage and reach out to the farmers." We had uh, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University Vice Chancellor came and said, I have 200 technologies and I'll be happy to support you, right? We have, uh, you know, NABARD, uh, OFDG, responsible for 5,000 FPOs. Uh, Mr. Uday came and talked about, and Srivat Sava came and talked about how uh, these technologies can go to the farmers, right? So this is the idea that what we're doing on Saturdays. This is hosted by IAM Bangalore. And thanks to Niam, Niam hosts one technology every Tuesdays and Thursdays, so that you can go deeper in one technology. Today, Ravi is going to talk about the wonderful thing that he has developed. So like this, this will pick one technology and go deeper so that people can have a deeper conversation. So I'm glad, I think, uh, you know, uh, Niam must be doing around that 15th or 16th session today, and the Saturday session is becoming 15 sessions today, right? We have 1200 technologies today available in the system. And we have another 700 technologies to be uploaded from Indian Coffee Board and Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, CFTRI, and there are a lot of foundations like Selco, and they're all having amazing technologies that's going to go. I think numbers are growing. And here is an opportunity, whether you are an innovator or whether you are a startup or you are part of an FPO or a, you know NGO, or a skilling company, you're looking for ideas to work on it. Uh, this is a great opportunity. And I'm glad, uh, you know, there are quite a lot of you joined today and enjoy and utilize this opportunity that is available so that you can, you know, uh, further enhance what we want to do is create an Akmaner for pharma. Yeah. So actually, uh, if you just click the link, I want to show that site to them quickly. In the chat box, I've shared you a URL link. So I've clicked the link. Yes. Can you share this? Yeah. Is it visible? Uh, not yet. No, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Perfect. So this is the you know uh, platform today. I think uh, we are very grateful to uh, there is an NGO called India CSC. It's building this platform, and if you go on the top. So you have, uh, so you can see about this outreach. And if you click the outreach section, you will see this recording of all these sessions are available. So we have NIAM, NASCOM, and NSRCL are available there. And we are also partnering with Doordarshan. Doordarshan, because these are all, uh, you know, technologies, these WebEx sessions or Zoom session, the farmers are not going to log in and understand, uh, you know, these technologies, so we're partnering with Doordarshan, we are going to pick up 100 technologies where Doordarshan is going to air it and so that the farmers and uh, with the FPOs and um, uh, the KVKs, they can do a screening session at the villages, it being your rural vernacular languages that farmers can understand these technologies. So that's coming up very soon. If you go down actually a little bit, yeah. So we can see that agri tech has come from you know ICAR and IATs. And we have a lot of livestock technologies. 
uh, scientific researches from coming from the CSIR apps and uh, Himalayan Bazaar is about the entire states of Himalayas. So if you click the agri tech, um, uh, Akshay. So you can see that uh, all these technologies in agri, if you go down, so um, uh, click product technology. There are two sections, there are market trade and product technology. The product technologies are the one developed by the scientists. It may be still patent pending or that's not licensed. So here's an opportunity. You could be the first one to license this product and take it to the farmers, right? And uh, look at uh, if you come down a bit. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if you just click uh, just one of those, yeah, just cooling, mobile cooling. So the, here is somebody developed a simple cooling technologies for transporting your vegetables because the freshly produced you will have a problem about taking to the market. So here is opportunities for you to click, chat with them and all that. Thing. Yeah, you could go back. So like this, you can explore and, uh, you know, yes. So, if you, yeah, go up. Yeah, go up, please. So if you click the agri tag, so you can drop down. There are classification done on many areas. You can look at the cold chain, you have a digital farming. So click any one of those section. So you'll be able to drill down to, to the things that what you want to do and what you want to learn. So you can see there's only the cold chain related things will show up. You can click and talk to the innovator and bite. And so if you're not logged in, you, you'll be able to browse it through like this. But if you want to have a deeper conversation, you can register yourself as a buyer and if, if you go above, all the way above. So there is a register button. You can register yourself from the top and then uh, you can log in. And so that all these informations, uh, you can be stored, you can put it, right? So, and the similar, and same thing we have on livestock and scientific research as well. So if you can go back to the home um, action. So this is market ready products. If you click the market ready. So this is some of the products which you have seen now. These are all products in development. So it may require funding. So that if you are an investor, you can invest. Or if you can license this technology and make it for yourself. These are all the ready products available by these various institutions. You can just buy these products, right? So like this, you know, there is divided in two stages, market ready and product and technology that you can license and things like that, right? So if you can go back to the home uh, action. Yeah, I'll open another tab. So if you can come down. So you see all these tales, we have international collaboration that we are working on it and we will be partnering with overseas people who can buy these technologies as well. You can see that there are, you know, 44 countries, people are visiting the site. So if you are an innovator, Ravi, so ensure you log in and update all your technologies up to date so that people can contact you. So if you can come down, uh, Akshay. You can see that uh, now there are 1146 technologies available and how many in agri-tech in each region, so you can see that. So we will be uploading another 700 technology very soon. So if you go down, Akshay. So Umang is a government in, in entity that this is that Ecopala only for uh, traditional uh, cows that was launched by the Prime Minister of, uh, you know, last week, you come down. So here is the details about today's session, right? So you can see about today's session is happening. So when the today's session is over, we will soon upload about Thursday session details that you can click and register. And similarly, the Friday, Saturday sessions will be available, available here as well. If you go down a bit, so you can see that there's quite a lot of challenges being introduced by the government. So if you look at here is a design challenge and people can apply. There's a below that uh, there are problems which are not solved. Like, for example, Punjab government was telling we need a technology that will reduce the water consumption by 50%. So the PSA office is able to put a challenge with Tata Chemicals 
So they are looking for ideas. How can you reduce the water consumption in paddy growing? So that challenge is out there. You can apply and then uh, get selected and you can work on it. So if you come down, all our partners and who are involved in this process and um, CIFCO is working on sponsoring the Doodarshan projects and NSRSL IMB is working on it. You will see NIAM and ISRO is providing the data for weather forecast and all those things, which is coming up later as an Atman Nirbar uh, farmer. Yeah. And so the entire lifestyle details come from the Gates Foundation. Fiki has given working towards the interna international collaboration. So this is a completely, uh, you know, volunteers, all of them are volunteering to create this fantastic movement. And uh, if you can contribute in any way, just reach out and there is a contact session. You can email us. We'll be happy to engage and to this as well. If you have technologies, you can register and upload your technologies as well. And uh, it'll get be, uh, you know, after a review, you'll get posted on the site as well. So that, uh, thank you very much. And uh, looking forward, uh, you know, amazing movement towards what we're trying to do to ensuring that we have farmers who are going to become Atmanarbar. At the same time, the rural livelihood has improved so that the people need not leave the amazing rural livelihood, end up and still living in the slums of uh, Mumbai and Delhi and Bangalore and walking back their home at any small distance, right? So that's the idea. And if you're also a volunteer, like for example, um, so there was an NGO last week reached out and said, uh, you know, we are from Andhra Pradesh and we need these technologies to be presented to our farmers in Telugu. We said, fantastic, you organize a session. We'll be happy to, you know, uh, arrange one session just for you on whatever technologies that you want in the local language, what you want. So you can mobilize uh, local farmers, local youth, and you can come back to us and we'll be happy to arrange sessions for you to uh, take this forward because this is lab to land. So unless it hits the land, uh, it's not going to add value to anybody. So our goal is about how do we take these technologies to the land and make the farmer uh, more, uh, you know, income friendly. At the same time, why we introduce multiple things is uh, not only farming, it's animal husbandry, as well as handloom. Because earlier, farmers had a multiple revenue stream, right? So, the, so that, you know, he's not dependent on one thing alone. Last week, we have uh, uh, a, one startup called Happy Hands came and mentioned about how he's making a farmer, uh, you know, uh, growing country chicken, free-range poultry. And this is secondary income for the farm, right? So he has, a, you know, two, three acre land, but he's also growing 250 chicken in his land and he's able to make money out of it. So now the idea of the handloom is that if you're a banana a farmer, you don't need to look at just income from banana alone. What can you do with the banana stem? There are technologies we will upload in here about how do you make a banana fiber? That the shirt, the, you can make shirt out of banana fiber. You can make rope out of it, banana fiber. So every part of a banana plant could be utilized so that the farmer is able to increase his revenue income, just not only selling bananas, but every aspect of bananas. If you are growing soya, then we are talking to some research institutes that soya, soya fiber can be utilized instead of cotton. So today, you know, what I'm wearing is cotton, it's khabi, but today cotton requires a lot of water. So people are looking for alternative fabric. So this is where we are looking at providing multiple revenue sources to the farmers so that, you know, they will be able to, uh, you know, manage their adverse conditions, which may arrive once in a while. With that, thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, email us at kisanmitra.indianist.in or I'll visit the website. Um, so thank you, Niam, for hosting. Great job. Thank you, everyone. And Akshay, please continue. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I think the presentation spoke at all. Uh, it was very... Um... Nice. The website is very well laid out. I think all the all the you know all the options on the portal are very clear to all of us. So once again, thank you so much for uh, getting this into our lives. I think uh, this is going to go miles ahead. So uh, with the next presentation, uh, we have Dr. Uh, Ravi Chandra Biram, sir. I again welcome you on behalf of CCS Niam, and uh, over to you, sir. Sir, kindly unmute yourself, please.
good morning everyone this is uh, uh, ravi chand uh, i hold a phd in genetic engineering from international center for genetic engineering and biotechnology but my first degree is in agriculture from gujarat agriculture university anand uh, subsequently i have uh, i have done my pg in genetics from chaudhary charan singh uh, haryana agriculture university before uh, getting on to uh, international center for genetic engineering and biotechnology in new delhi so largely i have the experience from agriculture to genetics to genetic engineering and i you know i look you know very close into the engines to make them you know better so that you know we can exploit them to the full potential so we started this company karyotica biologicals uh, in the year 2012 and we started asking this question can we really develop some technologies to enhance the livelihood of people either in agriculture or in other industrial segments or you know or, or human health so the idea is to ask a very simple basic question and actually to investigate into the gap of the research the you know when industry is doing something farmers require something Or the you know universities are doing something, so there is a gap between you know what we really want and what we are doing and what is really available in hand. So we started asking the very simple questions. With the minimal technologies, can we really you know make a big difference? So the idea is you know the first question that we were asking is, can we bring in the enzyme technology to enhance the productivity of the livestock as a whole? So I'm just loading my presentation right now. so my project my presentation is about enhancing the sustainable milk productivity in dairy cattle through enzyme technology so enzyme tech enzymes are there you know they are known for more than a decade and they are they are known to really you know to you know help in digestion or you know bring in uh, certain change in the nutrients so that you know they are better absorbed but then you know they have not really been uh, you know they are not really exploited to the full potential in life livestock nutrition because there is a long uh, you know there is a general belief that the ruminants or the higher organisms uh, you know they have the intestinal microbiota and they have the capability to switch with enzymes so there is no supplementation supplementation of enzymes is not really required but then when we are going through the profile of the microbiota that is present in the ruminants or in the gut of the cattle then we have observed that it is not the my you know just a microbiota which have a, a microbiota which can secrete the enzymes but the kind of enzymes because most of the guts of the cattle they have the bacteria in them and they secrete uh, you know the enzymes which are not really capable of handling the all the nutrients because bacteria is being a prokaryotic prokaryotic organisms they have some lot of limitations in actually catalyzing the nutrients into absorbable form so we thought why not to bring in the enzymes from higher organisms or the fungal organisms because these are not really present in inside the stomach of the cattle So we thought if we can bring in the, if we can make a cocktail, a proper cocktail of uh, enzymes from higher organisms, that is from various fungal uh, origin, and if we can actually formulate them in such a way that you know they can act upon the feed once it is uh, you know given to the animal, the feed can be you know absorbed and then more and more nutrient absor uh, absorption takes place and that will actually result in. the more performance and productivity of the animal so this basic idea we started doing research several years ago at karyotica biologicals uh, which is based out of hyderabad we have a team that you know we worked for almost you know four years before we got the product in hand this is the image of our lab where and these are the people who were involved in this project and then even we come up with a solution where we made a lot of formulations we produced a lot of natural enzymes 
but then they were not showing good efficacy but then when we formulated in you know multiple ways we have created hundreds and hundreds of for formulations we realized that when we made water soluble formulations they were show, in a particular manner they were showing a lot of efficacy in increasing the productivity and health of the animals so there was no actually you know clear guiding principle how we have formulated them we were you know randomly testing various formulations based on some basic very you know low level scientific uh, knowledge but then eventually it worked for us one of the some of the formulations in fact they started showing great promise eventually we have created a decent uh, you know production facility to mass produce these engines and see you know, how they perform so this is the facility that we have at Karyotica Biological for producing various enzymes. And eventually we developed the various uh, unique enzyme based solutions for dairy cattle uh, for increasing the productivity, that is uh, increasing the productivity in the sense you know, to increase the milk productivity as well as to increase the fat percentage in the milk because in order for the farmer to get more and more uh, price for his uh, milk, the fat percentage is a major additive. You know, if the fat percentage is more, the cooperative dairy is actually they look at the fat percentage and then accordingly they'll be, they'll get a good price. So we wanted to use you know uh, bring in these two advantages through our NDM technology. So we employed a lot of engines like amylases, xylanases, cellulases, lipases, pectinases, and we made a proper optimal cocktail. From the you know these engines are derived from higher organisms. I mean to say, not from the bacteria, but from higher fungal organisms, so that they have all the post-translational modifications in place, and they're more effective in you know bringing out the response. So eventually, we developed a product called uh, Cariolac. Uh, that is a fast product uh, that we have developed. It's in a powder form, and we were, and eventually. We developed uh, various formulations using these engines, you know, by common, you know, by supplementing calcium like the acylical. Then we developed a fat a product called fat and milk and acylical brocal. Fat and milk and acylical brocal and acylical coat are essentially the same, but then you know there are different uh, marketing people who have adopted this technology and you know they usually sell the products on on our behalf because we are actually an R&D company. We do not have the presence in the market. So this the technology has been adopted by uh, various companies. For example, Fat and Milk is a Tata company, Tata Rallies. They have adopted this technology. They have tried and tested this technology. They, we manufacture for them and they, they distribute it. In fact, as we grow Cali is also a technology that is uh, adopted by Coromandel International and they distribute this technology um, by acquiring the product from Tata, uh, Tata Rallies. So Cariolac is one of such products. So this product is, is a powder form. It is designed to increase the milk production and increase the milk fat and to improve the digestion and overall health of the animal and eventually profitability of the farmer. So we directly we, we market this product uh, from, by, uh, from Karyotica Biologicals and uh, Acelical Forte is the product which, um, which is uh, you know, a calcium product embedded with this enzyme technology because we wanted to deliver a benefit of calcium as well as the enzyme. So we combine this technology. I'll tell you the reason why we have combined these two technologies. Because farmer, there is a mindset of the farmer which we couldn't change. So we thought, you know, we go with the mindset of the farmer and deliver a benefit. So again, this Asbical 40 is also uh, being distributed by Karyotica Biologicals. Then comes fat and milk. It's effectively the same like that of Asbical 40, but Tata Rallies, they have tested this product for about you know, a year and then they saw an extremely good result. And then they asked us to manufacture uh, this product for them and they started distributing this product. Then comes Asli Grocal. The same thing, Coromandel International tested this product and then Tata uh, Rallies distributes this product to uh, Coromandel and Coromandel in, uh, in turn sells this product through their Managromo stores. They have about 660 stores all over the country and this product is distributed through Coromandel Managromo stores. So coming to Karyolac, what is so unique about it? As I said, that we were asking a very simple question. Uh, we believed that the endogenous enzymes may not be enough to bring out the better digestion and the uh, uh, absorption of the nutrients. So we combined various enzymes. These enzymes are produced by very controlled fermentation. 
and these engines are all natural engines there are no recombinant engines or anything like that and they are carefully chosen mixture of the engines and we formulate them in a water uh, water soluble manner we are probably we are the only company who is making uh, water soluble engines for animal nutrition in the world because normally if you want to make water soluble engines the methodology is uh, freeze drying because engines being uh, thermolabile if you try to spray dry or you know dry by any other method they tend to get denatured but then eventually we arrived at a simple technology a proprietary technology by which we can make a water soluble formulation of the engine in a powder form and then that formulation is extremely critical to bring about uh, the efficacy that we are talking about eventually we thought when we set off with this objective we thought can we increase the milk productivity at least by 5% from what is existing uh, productivity but when we have tested the product uh, you know what we have noticed is by bringing in this formulation we could see an increase anywhere between 10 to 20% sometimes uh, the, uh, even 30% also uh, increase in the milk productivity then the bigger question that we were asking is when we, when the milk production goes up normally the fat percentage in the milk comes down so this is a normal trend that people notice when the cattle are giving more milk the fat will be less and when the uh, milk when the, as the cow uh, you know buffalo starts drying out the milk product, the fat percentage in the milk goes up this is the normal trend then we were asking by bringing in proper mix of engines can we achieve this magic of increasing the milk productivity as well as increasing the fat percentage in the milk? Yeah, we could achieve it and we could see an increase in the fat percentage in milk anywhere between you know 10 to 15. I would give I'm giving this range because normally animals they have they are in different lactation stage and they have a different genetic background as well as you know different health status. Depending on all these parameters, uh, the increase in milk uh, productivity to carry a lot of this enzyme technology per se is uh, you know showing various uh, level of efficacy so what really happens when you bring in this uh, cariolite or this kind of uh, this uh, kind of enzyme technology for enhancing the milk productivity what happens is you know uh, you know uh, immediately after the birth of the calf uh, the animals start giving milk uh, and then slowly the productivity goes up in about one to one and a half months and subsequently it reaches the peak point in the milk productivity and as the time passes, in about you know uh, uh, nine to twelve months of time, the animals dries out, and then it, uh, there is not any milk productivity. So what we have noticed is when we are ad administering this mix of enzymes, uh, there is a rise in milk productivity, and it, uh, the peak reaches to a much higher level, and uh, slowly tapers down, but the slope is less. Uh, so eventually, the window of milk production goes up, and the area under the curve. It goes up. So what it means is effectively, if you are getting about uh, for the sake of argument, if you are getting thousand liters in one lactation cycle, you may end up getting about you know 1200 liters uh, in a lactation cycle. So that kind of an incremental increase we have noticed. So total uh, milk productivity in a lactation increases by bringing in this kind of a technology. So you can understand you know from the graph, the total area under the curve has gone up. So which means the total productivity has gone up. So we have given this uh, product for uh, value, you know, for evaluation uh, at National Dairy Research Institute, Bangalore. They have evaluated the product, and you know, eventually they have mentioned that there is an average 13% increase in milk yield, and there is about 14.5% percentage, uh, percent increase in the total fat yield. That means not only you are increasing the income of the farmer by milk, but also Per liter uh, price that the farmer receives is higher, so the farmer is getting multiple in multiple uh, uh, benefit from multiple angles. Further, we have also given uh, this product for evaluation at, uh, at ICR Central Institute for Research and Buffalo, CISA. They have evaluated one of the researchers, uh, master's researchers. Uh, she has conducted the study, uh, the study on this product, and she submitted her thesis uh, where. She, they mentioned the economy, uh, the increase in the productivity as well as the economic benefit the farmer is deriving out of this uh, by administrating this product. So the overall the benefit that has that is observed is by spending about five to six rupees a day, farmer is getting anywhere between you know forty to fifty rupees incremental income by way of increasing the milk productivity as well as by way of uh, increasing the fat percentage. We also have conducted a lot of trials in Gujarat. 
I have given this job uh, to a company called Prerna Bio Innovations uh, from Ahmedabad, from uh, Gandhi Nagar. Gandhi Nagar. They have conducted various studies all across Gujarat. We have conducted study uh, in a farm uh, in Sabakanta district of Gujarat, where we have uh, tested this product on low yielding cows, average yielding cows, as well as high yielding cows. If you look at the data, there is an increase of 12.7% in low yielding cows, and in high yielding cows, the increase is about 8% uh, in uh, uh, milk production. And we also have scored this uh, uh, product, you know, what kind of um, uh, health improvement actually is it, is it actually causing any stress on the animal when the product when the product is going up? So we have scored the animal for uh, coat color, uh, alertness, uh, feed consumption, regurgitation, and mouth uh, muzzle wetness. So for all these these are, these are the typical parameters by which farmer or the veterinarians they evaluate if the animal is in good health or not. If you look at the data, in most of the case, in all the almost all the cases the health is improving when this, uh, this product is given to the animal, which is good. So we are, in one way, we are increasing the, improving the health of the animal and we are increasing the productivity of milk and we are increasing the value of the milk. So it is actually a win-win uh, situation for the farmers and for the dairies as well. I will come to that how it is a win-win situation for the dairies as well. They, which we have conducted in Panchama, Panchamahal district of uh, Gujarat in the village called Derol. There also, if you, you have seen, if you, if you can see that there is about 10.7% uh, increase in average yielding cows, and there is also a fat percentage increase, uh, fat percent increase up to the tune of 9.4%. Uh, and in, uh, you know, animals which are actually, you know, near drying, near low yielders, uh, increase in milk productivity is higher. That is about, you know, about 13 to 15% in this study. We have also seen, uh, we have also conducted, uh, you know, most of uh, a third trial in Gujarat, where we have seen uh, almost, you know, uh, milk production has, is doubled in a, you know, cow which is, uh, uh, you know, drying, almost is at the near drying uh, situation. We have also seen uh, the increase to, uh, of milk productivity up to the 22%, and in some cases, 15%. The data is very clear. So like that we have conducted so many trials all over the country in, we have uh, conducted trials in Maharashtra, we have conducted trials in Gujarat as well. So overall, the, you know, if you look at the health, health status assessment for six months, we wanted to see the long term impact of this product on the health of the animal. So we have, uh, you know, again scored the animals, about eight animals, we have conducted long term trials. For you know, regurgitation, muzzle wetness, uh, skin coat color, alertness, feeding, uh, these kind of parameters, and we scored the animals like you know uh, on a scale of one to five, from poor to excellent. So this is the data. Look at it all the time. You know, in all the animals, you can see the increasing trend. This is what is done by again Prerna Bio Innovation. So the always you know the health parameters are you know always improving when the you know, product is being uh, administered. So in summary, if you, if you look at it, what we have noticed is there is an increase in the milk productivity, and there is improvement in the health, and there is an improvement in the uh, you know fat. Important for what purpose has informed us that the number of visits to the veterinary doctor have come down uh, because the health is improving. So one might wonder, you know, why is this kind of response is being observed when this product is being observed? It's a very simple thing. We are ensuring that by proper digestion of the nutrients, it's a better absorption and you know better you know nutritional status of the animal because of which the productivity is increasing and the milk fat is increasing and health is improving. There is no other magic. That is a very simple phenomenon, aiding the animal to have the better digestion. That's it better digestion and better absorption of the nutrients. We have also conducted trials in Karnataka and we have not, we, are not, we haven't participated in the trial, but Karnataka Milk Federation, we presented the data from Gujarat and then we asked Karnataka Milk Federation to try and test this product. They have conducted trials in South Karnataka, in Mysore, they have a lot of about 12 union, milk unions under Karnataka Milk Federation. So they have conducted uh, various trials. This is a trial from uh, Mysore District Cooperative Milk Producers Union, Mysore. If you look at it, always you know you can see the increase in the productivity, milk productivity, as well as uh, the fat. You know you can see it on three in the first graph, 3.45 to 4.05, uh, 
uh, 8.2 liters of milk to 11.4 like that you can see always you know the upward trend at increment uh, increase in fat percentage as well as the uh, uh, milk total milk yield from the animal over a period or the during you know a window of you know 7 to 10 days this is a trial from uh, chamrajnagar district cooperative milk producers society which is also under kmf karnataka milk uh, federation this is the data given by the kmf uh, this is not our data so there also you can see a clear increase uh, uh, in the milk productivity so this is the again the data from Ramnagar District Cooperative Milk Producer Society Union Limited Bangalore, Devanhalli. You can see again uh, increase in CLR um, uh, by 1 to 2.5 in cows. So these are, these are, this is the data from North Karnataka, Dharwad, uh, and other places. So the, here the, the trial was also conducted on buffaloes along with the cows. So clearly there is an increase uh, in uh, milk fat because uh, there is a problem there used to be a problem in karnataka dairy farmers the fat used to be low in uh, both in the dairy and uh, in dairy cows as well as in dairy buffalo so that problem is being corrected by carola you can clearly see an increase in fat percentage uh, from 5.8 to 6.1 and 6.7 to 10.1 when carola is being administered in summary People have, you know, KMF has noticed a clear increase in milk production and fat percentage and corrected lactometer readings. And fat percentage was increased from 0.3 to 2 in May. This is the, these are the absolute numbers, not in total percentage. And milk increase was observed to be anywhere between 0.4 to 2.5 liters per day on average. And the problem with, as I mentioned earlier, with Karnataka milk producers was government used to pay them uh, about uh, some. Uh, 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 dividend uh, to the farmers uh, if it me meets some quality requirements that is about 3.5 percent of fat as well as 8.5 percent of sns is mandatory so a lot of unions are actually not meeting these requirements then but when carol is being administered they made this quality criteria and they are getting the perks from the uh, government so that is i think farmers i like the overall the product and came as a karnataka milk federation really like this product and recommended uh, for procurement of this product and we supplied this product to Karnataka Milk Federation but the distribution is problem because we, we, we were not having the distribution channel to reach out to every farmer. So overall if you look at the landscape of Karnataka what we know what we have studied by these numbers what we have realized is that if you can deploy this product a total additional profit for the dairy farming community of Karnataka will grow by 2800 crores because by incremental increase in the milk as well as the incremental increase in the fat percentage and then what it means to uh, the dairies of karnataka not only farmers will get benefit but for dairies will get the benefit of about uh, you know 1183 crores because they don't need to uh, spend so much on the health of the animals the procurement will cost will come down and uh, uh, the overall health of the animals will and the long, uh, longer uh, lactation rates will benefit the Karnataka dairies to the tune of about you know uh, uh, 1,183 crores. So everybody is winning by this product. So we have presented this data to the KMO and they liked it. But then we were clueless how to distribute uh, to each doorstep, uh, you know, uh, uh, each of the farmers, you know, because we didn't have the reach to the farmers. So we started talking to companies. We made a lot of efforts to educate the farmers. We, we, we you know, we had deployed forces to uh, educate the farmers about this product in Maharashtra, uh, in Gujarat. We have sand, you know, a lot of distribute, lot of samples, and everybody is happy about that. But then we were too, we were too, uh, too small company to really take up this job. So we had to, you know, reach out to bigger players like Tata and you know Coromandel to distribute the product. So this is the media coverage. Uh, regarding the performance of this product, 35 newspapers have covered you know, the performance of this product in Gujarat when we have conducted these trials. So these are the media reports from Andhra Pradesh where you know uh, 
everybody liked the product and in fact uh, vishaka dairy adopted this product and they started distributing this product from their side but then the distribution is not really that effective and even uh, sangam dairy vijaya dairy from uh, andhra pradesh they adopted this adopted this product and they started distributing to the farmers so overall if you look at uh, the achievement of our company in terms of animal nutrition we are the first company to develop a unique water soluble engine uh, for maximum efficacy in livestock uh, because of this formulation itself uh, you know only the only because of the formulation we are saying we believe that we are seeing the efficacy because we try to use the same engine in a different formulation they have shown the efficacy and uh, so using this engine uh, water soluble engines we have developed this carola where we could uh, demonstrate increase in milk as well as fat we used the same uh, technology you know to create a product called carrier max for growing including the growth and performance in shrimp we have made a product uh, called carrier blast to increase the growth and performance and feed conversion ratio in uh, fish and all this all these products carrier max carrier max and carrier blast all these products are you know phenomenal success now all these products are adopted by you know taken up by tata realis and uh, after that in careful evaluation for about a year and they started distributing on our behalf we also developed a technology you know patented technology to fight the white spot virus in shrimp in, in fact uh, we have moved forward and we have created you know uh, world's first uh, recombinant shrimp vaccine to fight the white spot disease and that is going to be commercialized by end of this year these are the product lines uh, for animal nutrition and all these products they are taken up by tata rabbit and they are distributing uh, to the farmers all over the country now we received first prize at international uh, knowledge millennium uh, conference for our innovations um, and then we got excellence uh, in biotech research uh, award at india leadership council 2011 um, not only that we have moved forward you know and uh, we have developed a technology uh, to mass produce something called uh, fructo oligosaccharide which is a prebiotic which is known to improve the health of the animals and performance of the animals this is a prebiotic uh, which is very expensive otherwise it cost about uh, anywhere between 300 to 500 kg so this is not being really used in in the animal feed and at animal feed i'm talking about poultry feed uh, cattle feed and shrimp feed but then we have developed a disruptive technology where we could manufacture this uh, for us piece a kg so we have created the india's largest fos manufacturing technology by creating an engine which actually you know does this you know makes this fos at a you know at a low cost so normally manufacturing process of fo is taking you between 36 to 48 hours but because of our ngm technology we could you know manufacture this fructose oligosaccharide in under 30 minutes our process is our enzymatic process takes about just about 30 minutes so we could create a capacity of 10000 metric and uh, metric tons per year capacity now we are uh, about to launch this product uh, for the animal nutrition uh, industry in the country so that in a natural manner we can increase the productivity of the livestock not only cattle but poultry as well as in aquaculture that's it from my side thank you very much for your time and the opportunity uh thank you so much sir uh thank you so much for the presentation i think you very well in very comprehensive manner explained everything Uh, to all the participants and all to all who are connected with us, if you have any questions or queries related to the presentation made by both of our speakers of the day, uh, kindly proceed towards that. You can also drop your questions or queries in the chat box as well. I would welcome uh, any queries in the chat box as well. You can also write to me at Ravi at the rate Karyotika dot com. So Ravi, uh, you mentioned about uh, some of these technologies are uh, now available to the uh, you know, uh, big uh, corporates and our Tata as governmental. So if a startup would like to license these technologies, they can still do that, or uh, is it only a salary given to them? No, so it is like this. If a startup is interested, uh, they can actually uh, you know take the technology from us through startup. The same. Uh -huh. 
in fact you know we have given exclusive license uh, to uh, tata rally coromandel in fact has licensed this technology from tata rally and uh, you know we give the product to them. we manufacture the product to them for them okay so any company can come and approach us we will talk to tata rally and through the tata rally we will uh, you know we will pass it on to the company okay nice good and um, these are all uh, the technologies to help improve the yield right yield and quality sir and the health because, of the animal. yeah and will that have any side effects on their health no sir absolutely that is uh, we have done long term study yeah to see the you know impact of this product on the animal because we are not people have this notion that you know uh, you know technology can also drop your queries in the chat box uh, uh, the email address given by uh, dr ravi thank you nanu sir and thank you akshay okay then uh, if there no further questions to uh, this to do i think we'll wrap this session up uh, i again would like to thank both of our speakers for patiently and actively participating with us a very thank you to all the participants for patiently hearing all the both of the presentations yeah ravi have you received the login details to log in kisan with the platform uh, i haven't received sir i'll request uh, okay just log in update so that uh, i think there's a great product and there are a lot of startups in the milk space would be happy to come in and take this forward yeah sure sir. thank you very much sir yeah okay please continue action Okay then, sir. Uh, with uh, no questions or queries, I think we'll wrap the session up. So, uh, thanks everyone for participating. I think both the technology and the platform are, are very well in camaraderie with each other, and I think we have a great future ahead in the startup ecosystem as well as in the agriculture sector. So, with you know, with, uh, you know, programs like this, and with I think we have a great future ahead. So, uh, thank you so much, and uh, uh, good luck to everyone, and have a nice day. Thank you so much. Bye.
I request all the participants to kindly leave this uh, session room, please. Thank you.